Persian Media TV for your local, national, and international news. Today we have for you a message from the president-elect for America, Joe Biden. He says, a presidency for all Americans. My fellow Americans, the people of this nation have spoken. They have delivered us a clear victory, a convincing victory. A victory for we, the people. We have won with the most votes ever cast for the presidential ticket in the history of this nation, 74 million. I'm humbled by the trust and confidence you have placed in me. I pledge to be the a president who seeks not divide but unify, who doesn't see red and blue states but a, unit, a united states, and who will work with all my heart to win the confidence of the whole people. For that is what America is about, the people. And that is what our administration will be about. I sought this office to restore the soul of America, to rebuild the backbone of the nation, the middle class. To make America respected around the world again and to unite us here at home. It is the honor of my lifetime to that that so many millions of Americans have voted for these visions. And now the work of making this vision real is the task of our time. As I said many times before, I'm Jill's husband. I would not be here without the love and tirelessly support of Jill, Hunter, Ashley, and all our grandchildren and their spouses, and all our family. They are my heart. Jill's a mom, a military mom, and an educator. She has dedicated her life to education, but teaching isn't just what she does. It's who she is. For America's educators, this is just a great day. You're going to have one of your own in the White House, and Jill's going to make a great first lady. And I'll be honored to be serving with a fantastic Vice President Kamal Harris, Kamala Harris, who will make who will make history of as the first woman, first black woman, first woman of South Asian descent, and first daughter of immigrants ever elected to a national office in this country. It's long overdue and. Uh, it's long overdue and we are reminded tonight of all those who fought so hard so many years to make this happen. But once again, America has bent the ash of the moral universe towards justice. Kamala Dodge, like it or not, you are family. You've become honorary Bidens and there is no way out. To all those who volunteered, worked, the polls in the middle of this pandemic, local elections officials who deserve a special thanks from this nation, to many campaign teams and all the volunteers, to all those who gave us much of themselves to make this moment possible. I owe you everything. And to all those who supported us, I'm proud to be, I'm proud of the campaign we built and ran. I'm proud of the co coalition we put together, the broadest and most diverse in history, Democrats, Republicans, and independents, and independents. Dependent. Progressives, moderates, and conservatives, young and old, urban, suburban, and rural, gay, straight, transgender, white, Latino, Asians, Native Americans, and especially for those moments when this campaign was at its lowest, the American, the African American community stood up again for me. They always have my back, and I always have yours. I said from the outest, oh, I, I wanted a campaign that represented America, and I think we did that. And that's what I want the administration to look like. And to those who voted for President Trump, I understand your disappointment tonight. I've lost a couple of elections myself, but now let's give each other a chance. It's time to put away the harsh rhetoric, to lower the temperature, to see each other again, to listen to each other again, to make progress. We must stop treating our opponents as our enemy. We are not enemies, we are Americans. The Bible tells us that to everything there is a season, a time to build, a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to heal. This is the time to heal America. Now that the campaign is over, what is the people's will? What is our mandate? I believe it, it is this. Americans have called us to march and forces of decency and the forces of fairness, to marshal the forces of science and forces of hope in the great battles of our time, the battle to control the virus, the battle to build prosperity, the battle to secure our families' health care, the battle to achieve racial injustice and root our systemic racism in the country, the battle to save the climate, the battle to restore decency, defend democracy, and give everybody in the country a fair shot. Our time begins with getting COVID under control. We cannot repair the country, restore our vitality, or reduce life's most precious moments. Hugging a grandchild, birthdays, weddings, graduations, 
all the moments that matter most to us until we get this virus under control. On Monday, I will name a group of leading scientists and experts as transition advisors to help take the Biden-Harris COVID plan and convert it into an action blueprint that starts on January 20th, 2021. That plan will be built on a bedrock of science. It will be constructed out of compassion, empathy, and concern. I will spare no effort or commitment to turn this pandemic around. I run as a proud Democrat. I will now be an American president. I will work as hard for those who didn't vote for me as those who did. Let this grim era of demonization in America begin to end here and now. The refusal of Democrats and Republicans to cooperate with one of with one another is not due to some mysterious force behind our country. It's a decision. It's a choice we make. And if we can decide not to cooperate, then we can decide to cooperate. And I believe that this is a part of the mandate from the American people. They want us to cooperate. That's the choice I'll make. And I call on the Congress, Democrats and Republicans alike to make that choice with me. The American story is about to slow, yet steady widening of opportunity. Make no mistake. Too many dreams have been defied for too long. We must make the premise of country real for everybody. No matter the race, the ethnicity, the faith, the identity, or the disability. America has always been shaped by inf inf inflation points, by moments in time where we've made hard decisions about who we are and what we want to be. Lincoln in 1860 coming to save the Union, FDR in 1932, Compromising a blessed country in New Deal, JFK in 1960 pledging a new frontier, and 12 years ago when Barack Obama made history and told us, yes, we can. We stand again at an inflect inflection point. We have the opportunity to defeat despair and to build a notion of prosperity and purpose. We can do it. We can. I know we can. I've long talked about the battle of the soul of America. We must restore the soul of America. Our nation is shaped by the constant battle between our better angels and our darkest impulses. It is time for our better angels to, pre to prevail. Tonight, the whole world is watching America. I believe that our best America is a beacon for the globe. And we lead not by example of our power, but the power of our example. I always believe that we define America in one word, possibilities. That is America, everyone should be given the opportunity to go to as far as their dreams and God-given ability we take them. You see, I believe in the possibility of this country. We always looked ahead, ahead of Amer of ahead to an American that America that's freer and most just. Ahead to an America that creates jobs with dignity and respect. Ahead to an America that cures disease like cancer and Alzheimer's. Ahead to an America that never leaves anyone behind. Ahead to an America that never gives up, never gives in. This is a great nation. And we are all good people. This is the United States of America. And there has never been anything we have we haven't been able to do when we've done it together. In the last days of the campaign, I've been thinking about a hymn that means a lot to me and to my family, particularly my deceased son, Bill. It captures the faith that sustains me and which I believe sustains America. And I hope it can provide some comfort and solace to the more than 23,000 families who have lost a loved one to the terrible virus this year. My great heart goes out to each and every one of you hopefully this hymn gives you my solace as well um yeah the hymn is written then he concludes a nation united a nation strengthened a nation healed the united states of america god bless you and may god protect our troops joe biden november 7th 2020 Media tv that's what we had for you thank you and keep subscribe and turn on notifications so that you are notified every time we upload a video and we have more information coming up for you we are keeping up on this story and we're going to give you all the information that you need thank you